Welcome to Room 6, the channel dedicated to the local Las Vegas music scene and the people that make it, including me. I'm Josh, and today is the first in a series of reviews spotlighting local talent in the same place each week. As opposed to me traipsing around town, each Wednesday at 8 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, friend of the channel Hal Savar will be hosting the Homegrown Songwriters Showcase. This event will have me planting some roots each week inside the lounge at the Artisan Boutique Hotel. Hal was kind enough to ask me to live stream the showcase each week and review each week's performances for the channel. I've included a link to the live stream down in the description. If you haven't subscribed already, please consider doing so so you don't miss out on upcoming streams and videos. Thanks in advance! This gothic-inspired, adults-only hotel is beautiful, and the event promises to be amazing and beneficial to all involved. I'm honored that Hal asked me to be a part of it, and if you're interested in being a performer, hit up Hal here or by using one of his contact links in the description. Okay, let's get started, shall we? But first, remember a second ago when I said adults only? That means this video might have some boobs. <gasps> You've been warned. Located just off the 15 Freeway and Sahara Boulevard, the Artisan Boutique Hotel is geared towards adults. This is definitely not aimed at tourist families looking for magic shows and all-you-can-eat buffets. Originally opened as a travel lodge in 1979, the property has replicas of famous artwork cleverly placed all over the place. And I mean, all over the place. The lounge continues the theme, and it's a really cool place to perform or just hang out. Speaking of performing, up first was our host, Hal Savar. Warming up the growing crowd and joined by his friend Shane Bonds on saxophone, Hal's performance was passionate as usual. Shane's sax playing added another lyrical note to each song Hal played, and the audience totally enjoyed it. Up next was David Wax, whose music has that great quality of being familiar yet unique. As more people filled the audience, David's songs introduced elements of classic acoustic playing fused with folk singer storytelling and sensibilities. His music is full of energy without being frenetic and feels ideal for the grown-up vibe of the place. Act number three was Camden West, a classically trained blues-style guitarist who's known for his powerful pop and folk rock music. Camden's back in Vegas after a brief stint in Nashville. The time spent in that illustrious recording city definitely shows as Camden weaved an intricate story with each song. With vocals that are just the right amount of raspy and dynamic guitar work that ebbs and flows as the lyrics dictate, Camden's an act to keep an eye on. Also back in Vegas from Nashville, next on stage was Charlie Hager. Wait a minute! Charlie opened his setup with a disclaimer. In his own words, he's a shitty guitar player with some shitty songwriting. The fact that he's recorded two popular albums would disagree with that, sir. Charlie then proceeded to endear himself to the crowd with songs chock full of local references and vocals that could have been sung by Willie Nelson. The pace was definitely a little slower here, but Charlie's music almost demands a glass of whiskey in your hand. It's introspective and forces the listener to listen to the lyrics, which are well worth hearing. Artist number five was Jan Jan, who apparently was visiting Vegas, or coming back to Vegas, from her current home in Canada. Joined by James Pasqua, this act was the only other duo of the night besides Hal and Shane. Accompanied by James on guitar, Janet's soulful singing was a decided shift from the previous acts. Building off simple rhythms, Jan Jan treated the crowd to lovely, beautiful vocal runs and seamless transitions from one note to the next. Channeling a little Sade, a little Tracy Chapman, and a little something all her own, Jan Jan's songwriting seems designed to evoke all the emotions. It was a nice palate cleanser before we moved on to the next performance of the night. Speaking of which, up next was Zoe Day. I mentioned Zoe during my review of Acoustic Fridays at Chiba Hut, and unfortunately her set got cut short that night. This time, however, we got the full show. With soaring vocals and powerful chords, Zoe's music has the ability to sound like a counterculture anthem and a love song at the same time. You really get the sense that she's got a message to deliver, and you're going to hear it, dang it! Oh, did I mention... Girls got pipes! I was really glad to hear her entire set this time, and I look forward to interviewing her someday soon on the channel. Did you subscribe yet? 
Next batter up was Carl John, who, at time of recording, will be my next interview guest. I'm so excited, and I just can't hide it. If you'd like to be on the channel, whether reviewed, interviewed, or both, hit me up in the comments or by clicking my social media link in the description. Carl's been doing music for a while now, and it shows. Starting off his set by shouting out the preceding artists of the night, his professionalism on stage was immediately evident to everyone there. Musically swinging the pendulum back to the country folk singer-songwriter side of things, his music reminded me a little of Mark Knopfler mixed with a little of Bruce Springsteen. I'm looking forward to uh, seeing what he brings to the interview. Coming up next was longtime friend of the channel and member of the Maybe Four, which includes three Room 6 alumni, thank you very much, Joey Hines! I'm so Joey is in the middle of releasing a trilogy of singles all about a boy named Timmy. I'll be reviewing it in April, so subscribe and stay tuned for more. Releasing original music since 2016, Joey's songwriting is irreverent yet impactful, not to mention a breath of fresh air. Whatever lineup he's in will immediately be better for it. What do you expect from a guy who markets shirts that say... The best part about his music is that, despite the funny moments he creates, uh, there, there's solid songwriting and playing behind it. I like to think Joey writes songs that bare naked lady are, are afraid to write. His set included a mix of the silly and the sincere, making him a crowd favorite. I'm really looking forward to uh, reviewing the Timmy trilogy soon. The ninth act of the night was another friend of the channel, Aaron Archer. Aaron's been writing and playing music in this town for years both as an original act and playing guitar or drums for various acts, both original and cover. Aaron in the recording studio, however, is slightly different than Aaron with an acoustic guitar. He has that nice ability to ramp it up when more effects and volume are introduced without losing the intensity and the purpose behind the acoustic performance of the song. Just like Charlie Hager, Aaron likes to drop some local references for Vegas natives while keeping universal themes running throughout the narrative stories. Another consummate professional, it's always nice to see Aaron play. Following Aaron was yet another Room 6 alumni, Spencer Hinton, who also is known as Kook, which stands for Kill Him With Kindness, by the way. The only electric guitar performance of the night, Spencer manages to amaze with guitar playing just as equally as vocals and lyrics. How amazing? Spencer managed to make me do something I almost never do when working a show. One of Spencer's songs is about a breakup in Paris, and it was so powerful, it made me put down my camera and just watch. Blending French and English into a narrative that touched some scarred over part of me I'd forgotten about after 20 years of happy marriage to an amazing woman. Love you, honey. I was once again impressed and blown away by this amazing songwriter. You should definitely check out Spencer's music. Rounding out the night was a surprise appearance by Allison, also known as Weirdo. Not originally slated on the bill, she was a welcome addition anyway, and uh, the audience enjoyed her songs written from the heart. A staunch advocate of troubled and institutionalized teens, Allison's playing and songwriting combines painful memories with clever phrasing and uh, lyrics to drive home her message. If you get the chance, check out her song, Ruin Your Party with Sounds by Leo. It's got all the makings of a great hit. Her set was cut a little short out of necessity, but it was great to see her and everyone perform. This showcase is a great thing for the local music scene, and if you're in the area, check it out every Wednesday at 8pm, or catch the live stream here on the channel. You'll be glad you did. I know I am. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you'll click the link down below to check out that live stream, and uh, drop by if you're in the area. Also. If you want to be on the show, like I said, contact Hal. Uh, if you want to be on the channel, contact me. If you want to support the channel, click that social media link button. Check out my Patreon, check out my online store. There's all sorts of ways that you can support the channel and support the local scene. Other than that, if you want to see more videos like this, please click up here. And if you'd like to subscribe to the channel, it would mean so much, please click down there. Don't forget to ring the bell. Remember to be amazing, and we'll see you next time on Room 6.